Uh, good afternoon. My name is Stephen Martin and I'm the Chief Executive of CEDA. And on behalf of Hamilton Calder and my hard-working team here in Adelaide, I'd like to welcome you along to this very important and significant forum. Could I initially, of course, acknowledge uh, the Ghana people uh, on whose land we meet and in the spirit of reconciliation pay my respects to elders past and presidents. Could I also on our collective behalf recognise a number of very distinguished guests that have joined us this afternoon. His Excellency Rear Admiral Kevin Scarce, the CEDA State Council members including our President Ian Sterling, many CEDA trustees and members and their guests and of course uh, all of you that have come from the Adelaide business community and are hosting tables here this afternoon. Thank you for the support that you're showing for CEDA and of course for a couple of organisations that saw that this was a, a time to look positively about the future for South Australia. A time when you could sort of reflect backwards if you like, but that will take you nowhere. And in particular, I uh, at this juncture would like to thank uh, His Excellency the Governor. I understand that uh, at a, a CEDA end of year trustee gathering at which he was invited to be present, he pretty much thumped the table and said, well look, you know, it's all people are talking doom and gloom, but what are you doing about it, CEDA? Well, we've never been one to sit back and not accept a challenge, and here we are. And over 400 people have decided that they wanted to be part of this conversation. A conversation, incidentally, that as a modern, young, 52-year-old organisation, we want to take to the world. And normally at this juncture, I'd say to you all, turn your phones off, because you might interrupt our guest speakers and our panellists. But in fact, I'll just ask you to put them on silent, and, for those that know what it means, you are able to tweet today. You are able to enter the conversation, which we've already started. I'm the first. You can see that up there. And I'd like to thank my staff back in Melbourne for doing that. <laughs> and those others come from Melbourne as well. But you can enter the conversation, and I seriously will be, during the course of today. Could I also thank uh, particularly uh, KPMG, who have helped bring this event together and Chairman of Partners, uh, Con Tragarkas, who is also a member of our State Advisory Council and is a, a panellist with us today. A as a membership-based organisation, as a not-for-profit, as a fiercely independent organisation, what we seek to do is to examine good public policy. And the way in which we do that is by hosting events such as this with very strong CETA partners. And so to KPMG, clearly our thanks is extended. Could I also thank uh, Chris Dowdle from Corporate Conversation and a CETA State Council member uh, for putting together video case studies that you're going to see during the course of this afternoon. And uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, Jeff Knight, the CEO of uh, DMITRE, uh, for being a supporting sponsor of today's event. Clearly, the department has an interest in what comes from this. Now, CEDA, because we do recognise not only is the future of manufacturing, the future of South Australia, is such an important element within the future of Australia's economic development, we'll be releasing in April of this year a, a, a piece of research which will examine high-end value-added manufacturing. What we'll be doing is trying to demonstrate that whilst some elements in our community, some elements of the media, some elements of government would want to suggest that it's doom and gloom because of some decisions being taken and, and the impact should never be understated nor undervalued, but that there are other elements of manufacturing in this country that are thriving. We want to highlight that and we will do so in our research and in Adelaide at the end of April we will have a similar event to this, we hope as well attended, where we'll be examining that. I'd also just very quickly put on the table of course that um, my own personal interest comes from this. Uh, for some 18 years I represented Wollongong in the Federal Parliament of Australia. I lived through the downturn in the steel industry. 
I lived through the fact and represented the interests of those 26,000 steel industry employees, now down to about 2,200, that went through massive community challenge and change for the Illawarra region. If you want to know about how you achieve significant upturn, stimulating different industry sectors, looking at the tertiary education sector, looking at the tourism sector, I'm more than happy to come and talk to you at any time, but I'm not on the panel. What we have done today is to assemble a very distinguished group of panellists under the very capable chairmanship of Tony Jones. It's not my job, however, to introduce that, but I can say there will be a takeout from today, and we will make that jointly with KPMG as a submission to the Economic Development Board for ongoing input and consideration about what can happen in this state. And as I've said to a number of the panellists as we've sat down here during this course of this afternoon in preparing for this, we are looking for a sense of positivity coming out of the day. We are looking for a can-do attitude. We are looking for a way forward for South Australia. And you will all contribute to that, and I'm looking forward to that contribution that will come through your questions once our panellists have presented. Let me now then throw to Julianne Parkinson, Director and Head of Markets at KPMG. Julianne, of course, is somebody who is known to all of you. Uh, she has uh, been involved in uh, uh, strategic planning forums for a range of government and private sector enterprises. Uh, it's about building linkages between industry and government and supporting the entrepreneur entrepreneurial market here in South Australia. Julianne, of course, is going to now introduce our other special guests. Thank you, Julianne.